All right, here we are at video number three. In video number one, I showed you about how to take a report and turn it into raw data. You saw parsing a URL, trimming blank spaces, a lot of really good things in Power Query. Then John in video two showed you some fundamentals, the things that you really do need to know no matter what you do. So there was mid, replace, substitute, proper. He showed you text to columns and showed you some fundamental tricks that you need to know when you're cleaning data. And now here we are at video three where I wanna show you about consolidating worksheets. And I tell you, if a lot of us had this a long time ago, well, we might look and feel five years younger. I just want to say again about why this is important to me and why I want to share this and hope that you, you know, see the value here. I could tell you about efficiency, speed, accuracy, but as I said in the first video, this is about ending misery, preventing misery, having things go right. Yes, you know, having better Excel skill, it did get me promotions. It did get me more money. It got me more recognition. But what mattered to me really was when things went right. There was a time when I was working at this company and a whole bunch of people kept calling because they got a termination warning letter from their employer. And I look in the system and they should not have gotten this letter. But something was wrong with the data i dug and dug and dug and asked questions and traced it back and it looked like some copy paste job went wrong somewhere one person's id was tied to another person's id and the person who should have gotten the termination letter they didn't have the right id connected to them but somebody else's id and that person got the termination warning letter Ending that is what I'm proudest of. I worked on a project with a company that delivers food by bicycle. And the project was to take sales data and convert it into delivery routes. So imagine you're this bicycle delivery person and you go to pack your cool, your trailer on your bike with all this stuff. You get, it's, some of it's heavy, some of it's just bread, but you got a lot of stuff there to carry. Would you want to start your route going uphill? Full cooler, uphill. No, that's misery. Data can solve that. Here we have four workbooks and we need to bring all of the data together and it's got to be cleaned. Let's have a look at it. Let's open all four. Open. Here's April. Month, volunteer, volunteer hours, location, the month of April. When we clean it, we would like. April to take up the entire column. We need to get rid of these empty rows and we would like to split these names apart. The last name from the first name and middle initial. Here's March, same thing, a big hole in the month column. We need to split the names apart and then there's more empty rows. June and May, the solution is going to be built in Git and Transform and we're gonna set up a dedicated folder and you'll see why. On my desktop, I'm gonna make a new folder and we're gonna call this Volunteers. And let's put March in to the folder. And open a brand new Excel workbook. So to start building our solution, data, new query, 
from file from folder. Navigate to the folder. It's on a desktop. It's called volunteers. Okay. Okay. Here's our query editor and it's bringing us information from that folder and it's telling us that volunteers March is in there and details about the file. Let's click content and name, right click and remove other columns. We don't need those details. Next, we have to create a custom column to bring our data in. Add column, add custom column. Let's call this import. And we have to write a formula, Excel dot workbook, open parentheses, open square bracket, content. Close the square bracket, close the parentheses. Okay, let's expand here. Click these arrows that are pointing away from each other. We want to bring in the data. Okay. Import data. Again, let's expand. Now Excel is looking into the workbook and seeing that there's four columns of data. We want all four columns. Okay. And now you see here is our March data. We've got the volunteer hours. We've got March. We've got the holes that are in the data set. Now we can start to clean up this data. Let's get rid of the content column. Remove. How do we get rid of these empty rows? Let's go to this column and filter out anything that says null. So click this filter arrow. Unclick null. Good. We've gotten rid of the holes in the data. Next, we would like to get rid of these headers. So pick any of these columns, like this one, and we're going to unclick where it says volunteer hours. Okay. To get March to fill up the entire column, click the column, right click, fill down. Good. And now we can separate the names. Let's click this column, right click, split column by delimiter. We want to split it by the comma because we can see that Gail R. Pate, the comma is where we can make our clean breaks. And we wanted at each occurrence of the delimiter, click OK. Now the names are separated. Let's make our headers now. Month. Last name. First name. Hours. and location. Now our data is clean. And over in our query settings, our steps that we took, they were all recorded. So let's go ahead, go to file, close and load. Great, 55 rows of data loaded into a table in sheet two. Now here is the exciting part. I'll lower this a little. And let's bring in April into the folder.
in order to bring in that new April data, we go and refresh our query. We can right click and refresh. Boom, 119 rows of data. And here is April. Here is March. Now let's bring in the last two files. And guess what? Refresh the query. 291 rows of data. April. June. March. May. It's all there and the data is all separated. Now, if we wanted to, we could sort this by last name. And this would help us get an idea of who's volunteered more times. How many unique volunteers do we have? We don't have to peel that data out of the four individual workbooks now. We could just add more data. We could add in July, August, September, October, and just keep adding and just refresh. The cleansing would happen and the import would happen. Let's do a pivot table to wrap up. With our cursor in the data set, insert, pivot table, new worksheet, close this query. Let's have month in the columns, put hours in the values, and let's put locations in the rows. And let's sort by the grand total, data largest to smallest. By far the most volunteer hours have happened at location C and the fewest at location I. We connected Excel to a dedicated folder so that when we get new data, it's just a matter of drop it in and hit refresh. But a key, the main key is that the data is always the same. The columns are all there in the same order. And as long as that's happening, you're good to go. A common need in Excel is to bring together the data from multiple sheets into one sheet. And here in this example, we have five sheets, blue, orange, silver, pink, crimson, and an overview sheet. In the blue sheet, there is a list for names, donations, method of donation, and a type of donation. So Cynthia made an $84 donation at an event with a check. The orange sheet has the same fields, name, donation, method, and type, as do the silver, pink, and crimson. And the overview sheet just has a total. Why we need to do this is sometimes we might want to do some analysis that involves all of the sheets. Maybe we want to compare the event donations versus online donations cash donations versus credit card or check donations. And then there are situations where we have missing information. Here, Wanda donated $200, Steve donated 550, and we don't know where they came from. So we need to get a sense of how much data is missing. And it's hard to do that with the data all in these five different locations. We're going to resolve this by using get and transform. This is a 2016 feature in Excel 2010 and 2013. This feature is also called power query. We're in our data tab. We're going to go to new query from file from workbook and we navigate to where the workbook is. Here it is. It's called donation lists import. 
and here is our navigator window. Let's click this folder to grab all of the contents of this workbook and we're going to edit. Here's our query editor and we see the names of the sheets in the workbook, blue, orange, silver, pink, crimson overview, and we have this entry here. So let's get rid of the ones that we don't need. We're gonna filter and we don't need overview and we don't need this one. Okay. Now we wanna get down to our contents. We're going to keep the names. Let's delete hidden, remove, remove, remove in our data, open this. Okay, I am not going to use the original column name as prefix. Okay, now here we have the names, the donations, the method, and types. Let's use the first row as headers. Okay, so now we have the name, donation, method, and type. Let's rename this by double clicking as sheet name. Excellent. If we scroll down, we can see blue, orange, silver, pink, crimson. All of our data has been brought together. Now we are ready to close and load. And here is all of our data. Now we can do things like run a pivot table. Say so insert pivot table. Okay. And let's close the query. Let's put the donation in values. And let's say, let's put the names in rows. And right now it's defaulted to a count of donations. So one thing that might be interesting is this. Let's sort the data, sort largest to smallest. And we see Sandra has donated five times. Iris has donated three times. Great. And what are those amounts? Let's bring the donation over again and let's shift the value to sum. Ah, Sandra's five donations totaled $292. Paul's five donations totaled $749. What if we sort largest to smallest here? Marie's two donations amounted to $1,024. Now we can work with our data and get more information about the people who donate to us. Let's pull out name and put in method in rows. Okay, now we see nine donations for $1,083 and we can't account for where they came from. If we sort largest to smallest, events and online donations are about equal. Now one thing we can do is see this method, that means that the titles are still in our source data. So what we can do to fix that is go back to data, show queries, Go to our query, edit, and then in names, we uncheck name. Check, okay. 
and close and load. Let's refresh our query and refresh our pivot table. Now the method is gone. We don't have any unnecessary data. So they have, we have successfully merged five worksheets worth of data without having to copy paste or write formulas or even use getting transforms merge feature. So what we've shared with you over these past three videos is really powerful stuff. John and I have loved putting it together and sharing the knowledge, sharing the real world experience. And it's all designed to make you better with Excel and make you that that hero for a lot of people who don't know that you were their hero. Now, some of you have been emailing me about learning more Power Query, more about data cleansing. And in the next video, John and I will be telling you about an upcoming course. We're going to be going much deeper into these features to save you time to make you better with Excel, to end unnecessary misery. This course will make you faster and more efficient from right where you sit. So once you learn all of this, you will have these skills for life. They will be indispensable skills wherever you go. Because data cleansing is at the root of everything. You have no analysis without clean data. So watch out for John's email coming in next week when we open registration for the ultimate power query and data cleansing online course.